let's talk submission. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Style. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I want to talk a little bit about being a submissive woman and a viral clip that has been going around. I've seen it all over TikTok. I've seen a little bit on YouTube. There's this viral clip talking about being a submissive woman. It actually comes from a, a podcast interview that Shambuti did with Jasmine Brown. I follow Shambuti. I did not watch the full interview. And so I'm just going to comment on this specific clip that has gone viral. I didn't know who Jasmine Brown was before watching this clip, but I did find out that she was in a relationship with Cam Newton, and I know who Cam Newton is simply because he took over for Tom Brady as quarterback for the New England Patriots. I live in New England, so like you can't live in New England and not know who he is at this point, right? Most of the men here in New England are still mourning the loss of Tom Brady more than any other relationship that they've ever lost before in their entire life, so... I did not watch the entire interview, but I've seen this particular clip going around all over social media, and I wanted to comment on some of the things in this specific clip and a little bit about their relationship overall in general. So if there was something in the full length video that counteracts something that I say in this, I apologize. I'm literally just taking this specific clip. What does a submissive woman do for her man? Everything. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, like packing his bag, unpacking his bag, um, just making sure all the things that he wants and like I, I pretty much read his mind. So it's like if I know you and I study you, like I know how you are in the morning, I know how you are about midday, I know when you're in this mood, what you need. Like before you can ever ask me for something, I'm already on it. I mean, he's spoiled. And you know, when I talk to my girlfriends about it, they're always like, oh, how are you guys doing? And I'm just like, girl, he's rotten. I'm like, he's spoiled rotten, like he's rotten. But I love that, like I want him to be that. I think my biggest flex is how I treat my man. And I've been known to love people back to health. And sometimes it's very draining, but my love is my superpower. And I used to hate that about myself, but now it's like, I'm just embracing it. Like that's who I am. Like if I love you, I can heal you. It's I your joy. It is my joy. You know, I, I love to see him eating the meal that I cooked. I love seeing him sleep easy. Every night, like clockwork, I scratch this man's back to sleep. And I know when he's asleep because I can tell when his breathing changes. And some people might think that's psychotic, but that's like, I just know that's when I'm like, oh, I can stop now. But I find joy in being your rest, you know? So know what that means. And, and that works for us because he wants what I have to offer. So basically Jasmine Brown is in a relationship with Cam Newton and she's talking about being a submissive woman, what it means to be a submissive woman in this interview. I do know that Shambuti got a lot of flack for not stepping in and giving her opinions on this interview and just sitting back and like listening to Jasmine talk about her relationship. I personally don't have a problem with that. I think that's actually a great thing because the point of this interview was not to make commentary about this. It was literally just to share her story. So I respect her for making that decision. A few things I will mention. I don't know a ton about their relationship, who they are as people, but there's a couple things I want to note aside from this video is I, again, I didn't know who Jasmine Brown was. I, it's my understanding that she's an actress. I think she does quite well for herself. And she's obviously a very beautiful woman. She seems very intelligent. So I'm going to operate under the assumption that she is in this relationship by choice, that she is deciding to be in this relationship. And this is not a scenario of she just has no other options because I would be totally honest with you looking at her. Like if she wanted to be a horrible woman and she just wanted to use men and abuse them or whatever, there's probably a lot of men out there that would be more than happy to let a woman like her do that to them. So, you know, I'm going to assume that she is in this relationship by choice, not out of some kind of desperation. I don't know where history, I don't know her background or anything like that. So, I'm just going by that assumption. I also know that Cam Newton did an interview a while back that kind of went viral in itself about wanting a traditional woman, seeing his grandparents as being role models and wanting a traditional woman who will cook and clean and do those traditional things. There are a lot of men who kind of praised that interview and Look, I'm all for people embracing traditional gender roles if that is what they feel called to do. I don't think that traditional gender roles have to be a necessity. If that doesn't align for people and that doesn't align for certain relationships, more power to you. But I do think that traditional gender roles very often actually evolved from the natural gifts that the feminine and the masculine bring to relationships. So I do think that embracing traditional roles is a good thing. My problem is the source. <laughs> Cam Newton is 
a man who has, I believe, eight children as of recording this by several different women. I don't know how many, and I'm pretty certain he's never married any of them. And he doesn't have any kids with Jasmine. He's dating her. They're not married as of recording this. So my issue is not so much with what he said. If he wants a traditional woman who's going to cook and clean and things like that, that's wonderful. However, I don't think that a man has any place to expect a woman to be traditional if he is not willing to be a traditional man. And a man that has that many children with multiple women and does not actually marry and settle down with any of them and is not actually obviously stepping into being a, a husband and father role, I don't think really has any business talking about expecting a traditional relationship. My two cents on this, all I'm saying like, you know, people can embrace the relationships they want, but I also don't think that we should be praising this man for saying that he wants a woman to be traditional when he is clearly not actually stepping into his traditional role of being a masculine father and husband. And I also will say, I'm shaky on the concept of biblical masculinity and femininity. My experience with the Bible is really Catholic school and that's that. So that's not really my perspective of where I come from. However, I do know that I hear a lot in the people who I connect with as far as, you know, biblical masculinity, femininity, biblical traditional roles. The concept of submission is really supposed to be for your husband. It's not that you just submit to any man. So the concept that we're talking about here is being a submissive woman. We're talking about a relationship of two people who are dating, who are have not made that lifetime commitment to each other. I think should be viewed differently than two people who have actually made that lifetime commitment of marriage. So I'm not saying that anything that Jasmine is doing is necessarily wrong per se, however, I do think we have to be very careful. I'm not saying that people can't embrace traditional roles in a relationship at any stage in dating. I am saying that I think we need to be a little bit careful of representing a traditional submissive woman in a sense that she is just dating a man and that she has not actually even become engaged to him. Like there isn't even that that commitment of committing to each other in a traditional relationship. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, they're all consenting adults. If this is the relationship dynamic that they want and she's okay with the fact that she's doing these things and she is not committed in marriage to him, it's her choice. She's an adult. She can make that decision. But I think that we need to be very careful about presenting this in a way that women need to be submitting to any man or any man that they happen to be dating as opposed to the idea of submission to a trusted masculine partner who has made a commitment to being your protector and provider and to being a true husband and potentially father for your children. Just in a short clip, there's a few things that Jasmine pointed out, some things that I agree with, some things that I disagree with, and I wanted to break down some of them in detail. One, when asked what does a submissive woman do and she says everything, like I pack his bag, I unpack his bag, things like that. There's been a lot of debate as to whether or not that's a submissive woman or whether that's a mother figure. And I think that can come about in different energies. I think as women, we need to be careful about doing too much. I'm not saying that when you're in a committed relationship with somebody that, you know, there isn't some give and take. Of course there's give and take. However, particularly when you're dating somebody and you have not actually entered the union of marriage, as a woman, if you are doing all the time for your man, you are not stepping into your feminine energy. The feminine receives. The masculine is the doing energy. Not saying that as a woman that you can't do something for a man. However, if you are doing all the time and he is just receiving, he is in his feminine energy and you are in the masculine energy. Very often those dynamics, even if they don't start out that way, they may start out coming from a very genuine place. But if you continue with that pattern and the man stays in his feminine energy, it's going to start to feel childish. If the woman starts staying in her masculine energy of doing all the time, she's very often going to start to feel like his mother. Very easy to slip into that mentality. So I'm not saying that you can't do something loving for your husband. Like I know there's a big debate online about whether or not women should be making lunches for your husband or whether or not you should be packing his bag or things like that. If doing those things feels very loving and genuine, go ahead and do them. However, if you are in the doing mode all the time and you are not actually relaxing back into your receptive mode, you're in your masculine masculine energy, you're not in your feminine energy. So you're not necessarily submitting to a man, you are actually mothering him. That's a fine line right there. And so I think representing submitting to your husband as being like doing everything for him, that's not feminine energy. That's actually very much masculine energy. And even if she's not mothering right now, she keeps that up, she's probably gonna end up mothering him. Now one thing she does mention is anticipating his needs, knowing what he needs before he does. There's a level of truth to that. 
I do believe that when you have a masculine partner and a feminine partner and they actually come together in heart connection, and this is a little bit controversial, but I'm talking about people who are actually stepped into healthy versions of these energies and are actually connected with their heart. They're actually, they're open hearted and they're connected in that way. They very often can anticipate the other person's needs often before they do. And that goes both ways. So very often the masculine will be so present with the feminine that if she becomes chaotic, if she goes up into her head or whatever, the masculine will very often know how to penetrate her. And I don't mean sexually, it could be sexually, but I don't mean sexually. Penetrate her in a way that will wake her up and bring her back to him, bring her back to her heart being open, bring her back to in her body and not in her mind. There are ways that the masculine can wake up the feminine with his presence and his penetration when she is out of alignment. And in the same way, when the masculine is lost, he's out of integrity, he may have lost focus, he may be out of alignment, something like that, a trusted feminine partner can very often wake him up. Sometimes that's with dark energy, sometimes it's with fiery energy, sometimes that's with nurturing, sometimes it's with sexual energy. Depending on what he needs, very often a feminine partner who is connected to a masculine partner's heart will know what he needs to wake him up in that moment. Feminine intuition is a big deal, so I don't know if that necessarily defines being a submissive woman, but I do believe that when you have two partners whose hearts are connected, then yes, you very often can anticipate what your partner needs before they do because very often if your partner is sort of lost whether it be lost in their head lost in confusion lost in in something stress anything like that they may not know what they need in that moment but a a heart connected partner can often anticipate what they need before and and that comes with time that's not likely going to be something that happens instantly in a relationship that's something that kind of comes with time with with intimacy with actually connecting to your partner on a deeper level and getting to know them so i do think that that part is actually very accurate that if you do have two people who are heart connected then you can anticipate their needs but it should go both ways because ideally you want to meet someone who has that same heart connection that you do. Because if you're the only one with the heart connection and their heart is closed and this goes in either direction, it, one person is always gonna kind of feel like they're being taken advantage of. Another thing Jasmine mentions in this interview is she references her boyfriend as being spoiled. And she even says spoiled rotten. And she also mentions that when she talks to her friends and her friends ask her how she's doing, she tells them that her man is just rotten, like he's just spoiled rotten. The fact that she keeps using that word. I know she's being playful and I get it, like I worked as a comic, I get humor, I get being playful, I do it a lot, I get it. It's subtle emasculation. It's subtle, but it's emasculation. That to me is a sign that she's building some resentment for how this relationship is going. I mean, I don't think she's doing this intentionally, like she wants to make her man look bad to her friends or anything. I think that when you see a woman who subtly emasculates a man, it's usually a sign that there's something going on there that she's not willing to actually accept and admit. It's kind of like, you know, anytime you're in a group of people and your man does something and you kind of make fun of them, put a little jab or something like that, that's usually a sign there's something deeper going on there. There's some kind of, Something that she's not saying, something that she's not admitting, something that she might be building resentment for. It's an indication to me that maybe the situation that she's in may not be as ideal as she thinks. She also mentions that her biggest flex is how she treats her man. And she's proud of it and it's fine. However, I do think, and I'm not saying she does this, but I do, I have noticed this pattern. So the fact that she's saying this leads me to believe that she might fall into this category. I don't know this for sure. I'm not making a judgment about her, but this is something that I have seen in a lot of women who lead very traditional lives, who, you know, maybe have social media accounts talking about traditional roles and things like that. It's one thing to say, I treat my man like this, or I do this for my man, or I have this role in my relationship. Own it, honor it, you do you, as long as you're an adult, you make that decision. It's another thing to say, you do this for your man, so everybody needs to do that for their man. I see this a lot. This was actually something that came up recently. I was noticing on social media, there was this trend in women talking about serving their husband first in a meal, which I, I'll be totally honest with you, is not my not my cultural background. I in, in my none of my family dynamics was that ever a thing. And and I'm I'm still not totally sold on that being necessarily a good thing. I would think personally that serving the person last would mean that the food was heated longer so that their food would be 
warm when they got it and everybody else's would be a little bit colder so you would like i would think that serving somebody last would almost be a more sign of respect but i don't know i i don't know that said if that works for you and that's you know traditionally something that you're aligned with and you want to do go for it but i started to notice a lot of women who were kind of like shaming other women for not doing that and it's like okay that may work for you and maybe your way of expressing your love and respect for your husband and that's perfectly fine that doesn't mean that that's how every woman needs to express their love and respect for their husband and that may not align for their relationship it may not align for them so so like the fact that she says my biggest flex is how i treat my man i'm not saying that there's anything inherently wrong with that and i'm not at all saying that what she's doing is shaming other women for how they treat their man however it's dancing that line i realize that she's doing this interview she was probably asked to do this interview so i'm not at all saying that that jasmine is shaming anybody for you know how she's expressing herself or anything i don't know if she did in the full interview i only watched this clip but i'm just saying that 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 statement kind of opens the door for that kind of mentality so just something i think we should be aware of it's, it's no no shade on her i'm just i'm just saying i think it's maybe aware of it a traditional role in in one relationship may not align as a traditional role in another relationship and i think the subtleties of what what a what a traditional role is going to be is probably going to vary from relationship to relationship and to just be respectful of of other people's way of expressing their love respect submission whatever you want to call it in in a relationship now jasmine mentions that her love has been known to bring people back to health i think is the way she words it i do believe love is healing i totally believe love is healing problem with that is that that can only work if you're dealing with somebody who wants to heal themselves and i'm not saying that this is specific to her particular relationship like i kind of got the impression that she said that in a way that you know in her life loving people has been healing for them love nurturing care compassion is incredibly healing for people and i don't think that we should we should diminish that because i do think that the way our current society has been set up we've kind of taken away that nurturing mother role like we think of the mother role as being this controlling micromanaging kind of role and that sort of warm nurturing divine mother role has been taken out of a lot of families because even though there are a lot of mothers present in the home many mothers are having to take on the masculine role of being a father so that they're not necessarily embracing the warm nurturing divine mother energy so i think we have a lack of that in our society so i'm totally on board with women embracing that nurturing warm loving divine mother energy i i think of divine mother energy as being the energy of like you know like like a hot meal or like you know wrapping yourself up in a big hug or cozy blanket or something like i think of that and yes that can be incredibly healing i do think we have to be a little careful of giving all of that to someone who either doesn't appreciate it not saying that's happening in this situation but in general i think for women to be mindful of of doesn't appreciate it or is just taking and is never 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 doing anything to help themselves like you can only give love to somebody to help heal them so much if they don't step up and work on healing themselves they're, they're never going to heal like healing has to happen from within and yes people on the outside can help you with that but it still has to come from within so i think we need to be careful of assuming that we can heal other people when in reality people really need to heal themselves and we can be there for them and yes our love care compassion divine mother nurturing energy can totally help the process but they need to do it themselves i think we need to be careful i'm not saying that that's what's happening in jasmine's situation i don't really know that much about their their personal life or what parts need healing or anything like that but I do think that we need to be really careful about that message because i do think that there are a lot of women who think that they can love a man enough to make his life better or make him into a better man and I have a lot of videos here on feminine testing and dark feminine energy and things like that it's not always that warm nurturing energy that actually inspires a man to step up sometimes it is but sometimes that only coddles his ego and it doesn't actually feed his soul and inspire him to step up so as a woman we need to be careful of not only looking at this sort of submissive or warm nurturing energy and actually learn to embrace all the flavors of our feminine energy because that's way more inspirational for a man to know like she talked about knowing what a man needs is that's not always warm nurturing energy sometimes what a man needs is that fire sometimes a man needs that like kali like i'm gonna destroy his ego right now kind of energy sometimes what he needs is that you know 
sacred slut energy like sometimes what's needed in that moment is not always that divine mother energy and i think as women we have to be careful that we don't sink into only using only one color when we have so many different colors in our palette there you go a couple points in this i don't know if it was once or it might have been twice jasmine mentions that this is draining that's a red flag for me because if doing all of this loving, this nurturing, if being submissive in this way, which I would argue I don't really think that what she's doing is actually submissive, so to speak, because it doesn't seem like she's taking his direction. As far as I can tell, at least from this clip, it doesn't appear like he's actually being a leader and being the masculine leader and taking charge and taking control. So the fact that Jasmine mentions at least once, if not a couple times in this clip, that this is draining. A relationship is not supposed to drain you. It's supposed to enliven you. That's not to say that there aren't going to be some good times and bad times. There's not going to be some times when maybe in the course of a relationship, you might need to give a little bit more than what you're getting because of the circumstances. But in the end, it should not be draining. A relationship should be invigorating you. So to me, anytime somebody says that a relationship is draining, that is a, a signal to me that something isn't right. And there's something going on that that person is not fully happy and satisfied with. Because at the end of the day, like say you are always packing your partner's bag all the time. If you're doing that from a place of love, then that should enliven you, it should invigorate you, it should feel like you're filling yourself up with love by doing this for your partner. It's draining if you start doing it and you start resenting him for doing those things for him. The fact that she says this is draining, that's a bit concerning for me. Again, she's an adult, she can make the decision she wants with her relationship. I just think that the fact that she says it's draining, right there, big red flag, that something is not right here. One thing she does say that I really, really, really do love, and I really wish that we could embrace it more, is she says, you know, my love is my superpower. The feminine is all about love. We're all about open-hearted, loving energy, and yes, for a feminine being, our love can be our superpower. It's just a matter of knowing who to share that love with so we are invigorated and not drained. And also sharing that love from an open heart, from a loving place, but also knowing when to set our boundaries and knowing when to be open to receive as much as we are willing to give, if not more. If you are a feminine being, you're gonna wanna be receiving more. I don't necessarily think that this is an accurate representation of what a submissive woman actually is. I just wanted to break down a few things in this particular clip that were a little bit red flags and some things that I did actually agree with. So if you have any other thoughts on this particular clip, things that you agree with, disagree with, things that I said that you might agree with, disagree with, I'm always open to respectful comments. Any other topics you'd like me to discuss, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I love to hear from you. I love your suggestions. If you'd like to learn the art of feminine communication, I have a master class in the description box below, along with links to all my social media accounts. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.